Hi, hello there, and welcome back to Steamer with Steve. Today, we're going to go through how to do the adding and subtraction of fractions. Now, the common thing that's really important with this is to make sure that the denominator is the same for both sides of the fractions that you're going to be adding together. So if you haven't liked and subscribed to these videos as well, can you please make sure you do that as it does help with our YouTube algorithm. So let's jump on in. So to start, um, I've made a bit of a meme here. So one does not simply add fractions with different denominators and hopefully you've picked up that is what's really important here. So if you've got a third plus three fifths, the five cent version is basically you need to make sure they have exactly the same denominator. And what we're doing there is we're chopping them up even more. So instead of just a third, we're going to make them out of 15. So one third of a pi when we did equivalent fractions was the same as five fifteenths. And the same with three fifths was the same as nine fifteenths. Now, because they have the same denominator, we can then add them together. So five and nine then gives you 14 uh, fifteenths. So you have a third of a pizza plus three fifths of the pizza, you would actually have 14 fifteenths altogether. So let's jump on in. So you will have to think a little bit today because it is a little bit trickier, but you should be fine with this. So the first question, what is a half a pizza plus a quarter of a pizza? So hopefully you've worked out, we just jam those together and that gives you three quarters of a pizza. Now notice that a half, if we change that into quarters, is the same as two quarters, if we split that up, and then two quarters plus a quarter, that gives you the three quarters. Knows that it had to have the same denominator. So if you had a heart, the two on the bottom and the four on the bottom, a common mistake people do is they just add those together and get two over six, which is not the case. So the denominator must be the same before you add the top together. So um, we also need to understand improper and mi mixed numbers. And so improper fraction is where the value um, at the top is um, the biggest. And a mixed number combines a whole number and the proper fraction. So for example, this is an improper fraction because it's got a whole, uh, the number on the numerator is the biggest value. So this is improper, whereas this is the mixed number version of exactly the same number. So what we've done is we've broken it down and we've seen that the four goes into the seven three times, uh, sorry, once, and then there's three remainder left over. So just pause the video, have a go at these ones and see if, how you would go. Awesome. So for the first one, five goes into 12 uh, two times. And then there would be two left over. So this, that's what happened here. In this case here, we've got five and two. And how many twos go into five? So that would go in two times. And there would be one half left over. And then the last one, four, goes into 15 three times. And then there would be three quarters left over in the corner over here. Right there. Cool. So next challenge, have a go at these ones. Just pause the video and see how you go. Right, so hopefully you picked up with this one. So this was um, how many fours going to 12? Uh, sorry, fours going to 12 is three times. How many sixes going to 12 is two times. How many sixes going to 35? Well, that goes five times and then there would be five left over. And last one, how many fives going to 14? Well, that would go two times and then there would be four left over. Then we want to change these ones, so mixed numbers into improper fractions. So we've got two and a half. So um, this one here becomes 11 fifths. Then how many, th um, three and a half becomes seven over two. And one and three quarters becomes seven over um, four. So when we're adding, subtracting fractions, the denominator must be the same, otherwise you can't add them together. So if we had three eighths of the pizza, and then we added on five eighths of the pizza, we'd up to be up to a whole pizza because you can imagine rotating that in and that would fit in. But then if we subtract one eighth of a pizza, how much would we have all over? Well, hopefully you would know that you would have the seven eighths. So I, because the bottom uh, denominator is exactly the same all the way through, you can just add those together and then also subtract the top as well. So this is the whole point. When we're doing fractions, this denominator has to be exactly the same, otherwise it will not work. And then there's the little image that I found. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. So the first way is the long way. Um, I would use this if you get really stuck and you're not quite sure what to do. And yeah, so the first step, if you've got one third and four sevenths, 
basically the first step is you times the bottom together to get the new denominator. So then it's exactly the same. And then you cross multiply. So if you're timesing three by seven, you must times the top by seven because whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So then one times seven gives you that. And then we must times this. Um, if we're timesing seven by three, we then have to times four by three as well. So then we have to times that by that. Okay. So then that seven times one gives us seven. Four times three gives us 12 over 21. And then we add them together and we get 19 over 21. Now, this is the long um, approach. There is a faster way, but it doesn't always necessarily work. So have a go at that one and see how you go. Cool. So what you should see, first step, times the bottom together. So 4 times 8 gives you 32. Then 1 times 8. So we're going to time, we've got to eight time, we've got to do 8 times 4 to get 32. So then we must times 1 by 8 as well. And then over here, we're timesing 4, um, 8 by 4. So we've got to times 3 by 4 to give us that top bit. So then we have 8 um, plus 12 over 32. And then we add those together and we get 20 over 32. Now, when we get to this stage, we should always reduce the fraction down. So we can see these are both even numbers. So we're going to divide them both by 2, but there's actually something bigger. We can also divide them both by 4. So we're going to divide this by 4, and then we're also going to divide the bottom by 4. So then we get 5 on 8. Now, hopefully you're looking at this and thinking, oh, there is a little bit more of an easier way. So instead of times in the bottom together, doing the cross multiply, can you see that we can times this quarter by two, and then we get exactly the same denominator, and then we can just add it together to get five eighths, because um, one times two is um, two, and then two plus three gives us the five on eight, which is the smarter way. So first step is you need to find the lowest common denominator, which is what the LCD stands for. So it means the lowest number that they have both in common. So in this case here, coming back to it, if we looked at four and eight, the lowest common denominator is um, eight. So we can times four by something to give us eight, and we can also times eight by itself just to give us eight. So in this case here, the lowest common denominator, we went through this whole process of timesing it together, and we got this really big number and five and eight. The faster way and the smarter way when we redo this is we make the lowest common denominator eight, and then basically what do we have to times four by to get to eight? Well, we just got to times it by two. So we times the top by two, and then we just leave the eight, um, three eighths by, the, by itself. So then that gives us two plus three, which then gives us five on eight. Now this method doesn't always work. So the lowest common denominator only works if there are times tables or something in common between the bottom. Um, sometimes, for example, the numbers are right next to each other. You will have to do the hard way, which we saw at the beginning. So having both ways is a good, um, it's basically another tool to put in toolkit. So that hopefully makes it a little bit easier. So have a go at this one. Cool. So we've got six and eight. So six doesn't go on eight perfectly. But because they're even numbers, that should be going, hmm, there must be something here. So the last common denominator between six and eight is actually 24. So you can times six by um, four to get 24. And you can times eight by three to get 24. So instead of time, doing the cross multiplying and times the top and the bottom, we're making it all over 24. And what we're going to do is we're going to times 6 by 4. So we're going to times 5 by 4 on the top here. And then we're going to times 8 by 3 to get to 24. So we're going to do 5 times 3. So that goes up there. So then we're going to do 20 plus 15, which then gives us 35 over 24. And then finally, we can reduce that. So we can 24 goes into 35 once, and there will be 11 left over over 24. Cool. So have a go at that one and see how you go. So with this one here, 9 and um, 12, the lowest common denominator is actually um, 36. So you can do, basically what I would do is go through 12 times tables. So 12 times 1, 12 times 2 is 24. Nah, 12 times 3 is um, 36. Not quite. And then 12, um, oh yeah, sorry, 12 times 3 is 36. And 9 can go into 36. You can do nine times four. So 36 goes on the bottom. And then what we have to times nine by to get to 30, 36 is four. So we're going to times the top by four. And then what we have to times 12 by to get 36 is by three. So we're going to times nine by three. We're then going to add those together. So we've got 28 plus 27 
all over 36, which then gives us 50, um, 55 over 36. And then we can reduce that further and have 1 um, and 19 over 36. Cool. So what about, what do we do when we subtract? Well, it's exactly the same thing. So instead of um, at the end adding things together, you literally just subtract them away. So if we had seven eighths and three quarters, I'm gonna, not gonna show the long method. I'm just gonna show the short. So I would find the lowest common denominator first. So eight and four. So I'd put that all over eight and then leave the seven. And then I have to times four by two to get to eight. So I'm gonna do three times two, which then gives us seven minus six all over eight. And then seven take away six is just equal to one. And then that gives one eighth. So have a go at this one. So if you remembered the long, lowest common denominator from before, which was 36, so we're going to jam that all over 36. And then 9 times 4 gives us 36, so we're going to have to do 8 times 4. And then um, 12 times 3 gives us 36, so then we're going to have to do 7 times 3 on the top. So that then gives us 32 minus 21 over 36, which then equals 11 over 36. So just pause the video and have a go at those ones. Cool. So hopefully the first one was pretty easy. So three quarters, um, three plus four is just seven. So that gives us seven fifths. And then that's one and two fifths. This one's a little bit harder. Um, notice that they're right next to each other, three and four. So I would just do the hard way of cross multiplying. So three times four, five times four, and then three times three. And then subtract that away, which is what they explained here. So three plus four gives us seven, which gives us one and two fifths. And then over here, five divided by three minus three quarters. Well, we're going to make it all over 12. So then 5 times 4 gives us 20. 3 times 3 gives us 9. And then you have 20 take away 9, which gives you 11 over 12. A little bit harder. Have a go at these ones. So with this one, 3 um, and 5 eighths plus 2 and 3 quarters, what I would do personally is just add the integers together. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And then I would do the 5 eighths plus the 3 quarters. So 5 eighths and 3 quarters, um, 3 quarters is the same as 6 eighths. So then we would have 5 plus 6 on the top there. So then you would have 11 over 8, which then brings a 1 over. And then it would be, um, what, 6 and 3 eighths. This one's a little bit different as well. Um, I would personally do the 2 take away the 1 first. So the whole number bit first. So we've got 1 and a half take away 5, 6. And then I would convert this um, into a mixed number. So then that would be 3 on 2 take away five, six, and then if we've got three on two or times it all by three, so we've got nine on six, so it should be four on six. So it should be one and um, four and six. But let's see how this goes. So with this one here, um, we had three and five eighths and plus two and five, um, three quarters. So they went the long way. So they did two times, three times eight plus the five gave us 29, and then two times four plus the three gave us 11. Then they times it all by two, so it goes this monstrosity number, and then they got to the 51 on eight and then divided it. Like I said, I would personally just add the three and the two together first and then just deal with the five eighths and three quarters, which is what they've done here. Um, and then down the bottom here, so then the bottom here, you got two and a half, take away one and five six. So two and a half becomes five on two minus 11 on six, which then gives us, um, if you're trying to get it all over six, you times this all by three. So you've got 15 on six minus 11 on six, which then gives us four on six, which then is the same as two thirds. So hopefully that's giving you some insights. Um, adding and subtracting fractions is pretty easy. Just make sure that denominator is exactly the same. Um, if you have any questions about it, please put in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you give us a like and subscribe and also sign up for any of the notifications for when new videos get submitted. Um, that's it for me. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Thanks again. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.